recording. All right. Hello. All right. I think I want to do something more neutral for the uh, the fabric. So we're going to go with some kind of gray. Neutral sort of tone. And off off white. Thanks, I'll, I'll be stream. Hi, Marceau. Making adjustments. All right, something more neutral like that. I don't know. feel like it works a little better.
Now, let's think about what do we want to work on tonight? Hmm? I just wanted to get eliminate that red because it was bothering me on the sleeves. Uh, I think we'll work on the hair some. Don't want to attach the arm until the last thing because I got to paint all this on the chest. I can temporarily attach it, but I don't want to permanently attach it. So let's get some brown back in her hair. I'm going for like a super dark brown, like almost black. So I'm just trying to rough in shapes. It probably looks black to you guys, but it is brownish. Evening, Noah. Okay, mm, that's pretty good. All right. Let's get a nice brown mixed up. So just some of that orange. Black and uh, just a skin tone to add a little light to it. Evening, Jonas. So where's the light go, right? We need to make sure that it follows. the same lighting direction as the face and the armor. So we're going to get most of our light here where you can see it. My day is fine. How is yours? Mm. 
Okay, so I'm just painting brush strokes in the direction that the hair grows. I'm not trying to paint individual hairs right now, just the uh, get some brush strokes in in the rough directionality that the hair is growing. I moose, moosey. Okay, we'll just continue to add a little more light to it as we build up layers. So, if you want to learn how to paint good hair and not make it look like spaghetti, you have to understand that a lot of times sculpts can be quite detailed, but they're also clumpier, obvious, like you can't hand sculpt hair that's as thin as real hair would be. Right. So a lot of the times when I'm painting hair, I'm ignoring the uh, I'm not ignoring completely, but I don't try and force myself to only highlight where where the sculpt is like raised and lowered. Right. So I'm more interested in the directionality of the hair, the flow of the hair, than I am the exact shapes that the sculptor has done. So if it crosses over or if it goes into the, the recesses, that's fine. Add a little more orange, a bit more yellow. Okay, see? So. Nacho Gonzalez with the big raid. Hello, welcome everyone. Bienvenido. Bienvenido a todos. Hello, Ramis. Hola, Ramis. ¿Qué tal? Estoy pintando un busto caballera. Okay, so see how we're trying to paint the directionality of the hair? 
the brush strokes follow follow the sculpt but do not feel the need to try and uh, highlight every single little sculpted volume on hair okay it's often better to just use it as a guide and paint hair texture on top In the end, you will get a more natural looking result. Okay, now we'll get kind of the rough look to it, but it's gotten a little bright now. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to take some of the brown and the orange. This is my wet palette, yeah. Got all everything I need, just can grab whatever intermediate tone I need. Okay, then we're gonna come back with the intermediate tone. This is like, it's not a glaze. It's thicker than a glaze, but it is uh, a bit transparent, so we can layer back on top. Oh, dude, it's gotta stay away from the spaghetti here. The coined, the coined Albert spaghetti hair. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. How you doing, bud? Happy New Year. Thanks, man. It's a little different for me. I don't tend to do this, like, high chrome armor effect. But it's, uh, it's fun. So using intermediate, right? Can darken it back down, increase the the richness, the depth of the shadows. If you want to do shot like dark hair, you have to keep it generally pretty dark but then you can have some pretty strong highlights like depending on how silky you want the hair to look okay So, like anything, it's a back and forth process of we push the light, we push the shadows, push the light again, push the shadows, find that nice balance of the two until we get it to where we want. Okay, so here I'm going to take some. Or I want to have pretty silky hair, but it's still going to be like a mid-tone. Right? Like, I'm not going to push the light to the level of the skin highlights, but it will look very bright in contrast to the rest of the hair.
So oftentimes I like to overdo it and then tone it back down. I also don't want uh, her hair. Like I don't need super saturated highlights for her hair. I think we want to get a kind of natural color in the highlights. I can use a little of the blue. So we end up with a sort of gray highlight. Also, uh, so look, right? The hair has a rhythm to it, right? The highlight has a a shape to it, even though I'm painting lines this way, right? In the direction the hair is growing, the highlight has its own its own shape and form. I sin Astasia. Uh, and that depends, Moose. Um, sometimes I have a very clear, like, direction in mind with a figure, and then sometimes uh, when it's a figure like this and I'm just experimenting a little bit, it's a much more um, natural process where the figure, the, the painting kind of comes as I go. Right? We've, I've changed a few things on this figure. Luchin? Lau, Lauchin? Hello, thanks for following. Right, so it's not... It's not a... Uh, some pieces, yes. There's, there's like a... Clear art direction in mind, and then uh, and then others. It's uh, yeah, it's a little more free form. She's a little more free form. I think it has a lot to do with what the purpose of the figure is. Right, so in this figure, it's a, it was a lot about like experimentation. Um, a lot of the painting this figure is more about the process than it is about the the end result. And not every figure you paint has to be, uh, you know, some planned out masterpiece. It can just be for fun, you know? Yeah, you know, painting can be fun. That's great. I know it sounds crazy.
All right, tip time. You guys want to paint thin lines? Hmm? See how thin those lines are? Okay. We'll give you, you want, you want a secret? What the pros won't tell you. If you want to learn how to paint thin lines, or you want to paint thinner lines, don't do this, okay? See? This, if the angle of your brush is like this, you're not going to get a thin line, because when you finish the stroke, right, you lift the brush and it's flattened out. Okay? The flatten, the bark, the brush flattening, you can see it better on a brush like this. Right? So if you if you take the brush and you go like this, look look at how the brush finishes the stroke. See? It's it's all wide. If you want to paint thin lines, you have to paint the brush needs to be perpendicular to the surface, not angled, right? So that when you finish the stroke, it's just the tip of the brush. All right. Give me a second. I'll show you the difference. Come on. All right, let's take some of this brown. It doesn't really matter what color. Even with a super wide brush like this, right? This brush is pretty big. Okay. This is a size four, right? If I go like this, my brush is angled, right? And I try and paint thin lines. See how wide it is at the bottom? But if I come at it perpendicular, which you're not going to be able to see, so I'll angle slightly this way. Even with a size 4, Eh? Okay, let's do it with the skinny brush. Okay, so angled. I can get pretty thin. But I have, it's much harder to control than like this. This is a tiny brush, so I can now get like ultra thin lines. Big, tiny. Those are, those are small. All right. <laughs> That's her head. Those are thin. Those are thin brush strokes. Okay. So, there's your tip. Make sure the brush uh, perpendicular to the surface. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle.
Yeah, that one. This one is, yeah. The black one. So shiny. And then her hair overall still looks quite dark. Yeah, they're not bad. They, they gave me a set to at, uh, at uh, SMC. They gave me a set to try out and uh, they're overall, I'd say they're quite nice. Okay, so we get the main warm light in. What do we do for the other side? It, well, if we want to make the other side, we want to use a slightly cooler gray. If we want to create a kind of highlight on the other side, just to give some, some shape to the hair. There's some, some definition on the other The other parts. What do I use for my lighting? I have a big LED panel above my head. It's like a film light. Are they rebranded or Chimera original? I mean, obviously, like Chimera doesn't make them themselves, but they're made in Italy. But they are made to Chimera's specifications. So if you're wondering if they're just like a rebranded Series 7, then no, they're, they are made to Chimera's uh, specifications. Just because the manufacturer, so like the manufacturer on Otis, Artis Opus, is I'm pretty sure Rosemary and Co. Rosemary and Co. Right, I think, but they're made to Artis Opus specs. They're not just like rebranded whatevers. Okay, so we got the rough shape. Uh, we got kind of the rough of the front of the hair. Let's mess around with the eyebrows a little bit. We want to get the eyebrows in general are pretty dark, but they in the brightest highlight point of her of her uh, head. We'll get just a little bit of light on the eyebrow and 
The eyebrow can also have a highlight on it. Okay, and then that's in shadow. We don't need much to do, and we don't have to do much in the shadow, right? Because I suggest that you guys look at how uh, Rembrandt or someone painted hair, okay? There needs to be some indication of form there because we're not painting a canvas. You can't, you can't just quite leave it uh, like all black to give what would be like considered lost edge in any, um, it's a little harder to do a loss of detail on a figure because the sculpt is got shape and form to it, but you can, uh, I don't have to go as intense with the, with the, uh, the texture. I can do a little less texture on the shadow side. to create a contrast of texture and form. Okay, because what is texture? Anyone? Anyone? What is texture? Why do things have texture? Yes, they have small, they have tiny volume, right? Micro, micro volumes. So things that are smooth, right, that don't have texture, like this handle has basically no texture to it, other than the little scratches on, you know, the tiny little scratches and dents on the surface. It has no light, like light and shadow doesn't really affect it the same. Yeah, so you have differentiation, yeah, exactly. You have differentiation in light patterns because the surface is uh, pitted or whatever. So when things that are would be heavily textured in or in shadows, you have a loss of texture detail because you don't have the same amount of light and shadow to show those textures. Okay, my beard looks very textured because you're getting lots of little hairs overlapping each other and light gets in and uh, causes shadows inside the hair. And it creates that texture. Hmm? Or my shirt does not really have much texture to it because there's not all these little overlapping lights and shadows. Okay, makes sense. So, in shadows, you lose texture.
Hey Eric, I'm about to start my first real attempt at a bus. Do you have any tips for someone who usually paints at smaller scale? It is uh, my tip to you would be you have to think about them a little different, right? When you're painting small scale miniatures, then one of the most important things is definition. Um, where when you're painting a bust, you have much more room to be nuanced. Okay. So often where uh, you don't have to go as crazy with like trying to paint everything hyper uh you don't have to like edge highlight everything to like the extreme on a bust okay. readability is in, is like super important on small scale figures just the sheer size of a bust allows uh, increases its readability, so. All right, we're next. Yes and no. I mean, you can do quite a lot with the light on a small scale figure, but you maybe have to simplify some things. All right. I don't want to hate the uh, the red the red cape now. Wasn't a huge fan of it before. Having have, was having a hard time finding uh, a tone that I liked on the cape.
so small. Uh, it's just standing out a lot. Wasn't quite fitting in with the overall color palette. I think it works okay now. Still has a little bit of a Superman feel. Um, that I'm not in love with, but Yeah, it definitely has uh Jared it definitely uh could get some warmer tones, but she I don't want it to appear like blonde, right? Um or red. So it can be kind of easy to go overboard on the saturation of with the the saturation on hair color. Uh, and if you're going for like a dark brown, like some dark brown tends to uh, dark brown hair can get pretty desaturated. Uh, Erica, I was looking at your winning piece, Mephiston, and there's something that stuck out to me on the left shoulder plate where he's holding the fire sword. There's a part of the gold rim that does not have an orange reflection of the fire. I thought it was interesting and was wondering the thought behind that. The gold? Huh? What are we talking about? Mephiston. Gotta go back, man. You can make me scroll back to see Mephiston. Jeez. Uh, hold on. Where is this guy? I painted him a while ago, huh? Here we go. Mephiston. There? Looks pretty yellow to me. Goes through yellow, orange, and red right there on his on his shoulder trim. I mean it's behind the sword. There's definitely a, a flame reflection on on his shoulder trim. What's the question? More up on the left? Right. I don't know what you're asking. I don't know where you're trying to say. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're where? <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're, uh, you're seeing something that I'm like, I don't know where you're at, where you're telling me it should be. <laughs> Do you see the bust as a 3D figure or a super detailed canvas oil painting? 
I see the bust as a, as a, uh, uh, as, well, I don't know. That's tough, right? I see it as a person. It's just another canvas to paint on, right? I don't think of it as... particularly one or the other. I don't know, what do you guys think of the red? Am I good at traditional painting too? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm good, I'm competent. Like I can paint 2D. Let me see if I've got, I have to be careful showing pictures in my phone, not because of things I don't want you to see, but because of, uh, there could be figures that aren't released yet that I don't, that I'm not allowed to show. So I have to find the picture first to then show you. Like this is all of the background is 2D. So, uh, I guess more what you're asking is, do I know how to draw? And I will say, uh, yeah, I am capable of drawing. I'm a competent illustrator. I am not an expert illustrator. Or draftsman, I don't know. What you, I don't know what you would call it. I think most like good miniature painters could paint canvases if they knew how to draw.
Do I do commissions for collectors too, or just for companies? Uh, no, I do for collectors. That that one I just showed you, the loft, the spider lady, was a collector commission. Actually, Mephiston was also a commission for a collector. So, I do both. Any planned workshops for this year besides Adepticon and Nova? Yes. July, I will be in Las Vegas is currently the plan. Uh, that's one. I'm also talking about maybe doing Portland. I don't have, I mean, no, but I don't have any, like, two-day workshops planned. If somebody wants me to teach a two-day workshop on the West Coast or on the East Coast, you want something in the Northeast, then you guys, somebody's got to uh, take the initiative and, you know, find a venue, blah, blah, blah. Contact me about it. There is a... In the FAQ on the Discord, there is a thing about workshops. Oh, wrong country. Okay. Uh, well, that depends. Are you in Europe or what? Because I'm also teaching a bunch of workshops in Europe this year. I just figured... I don't have a bunch of European, uh, I don't tend to have a lot of European viewers on Twitch because they're asleep, but I guess for anyone watching on YouTube or any Europeans we might have in uh, chat at the moment, I will be doing one in uh, currently planned uh, uh, the UK. Poland, Germany, and Spain. Am I licking the paint? No, I'm not licking the paint. I'm licking the brush. The, the brush is clean. It's just water. Not licking the paint. Also, this weird... Thing about the the brush looking paint. This paint is non toxic. There is nothing. There is no. We stopped making white out of lead a long time ago. Okay. So, non toxic. However, if you get a paint like this okay there are paints that are made they will have a little thing on them okay there's a little box that they put on artist acrylics there will be a little box that's like seriously don't don't eat this okay But there's nothing. We stopped making paint out of white paint out of lead a long time ago. Now there are some like yellows and stuff, but most yellows now are not non toxic. But there are some you can still buy. 
that would not be good for you. Uh, what was it? There's a story about a bunch of, were they Russians? They were painting something, watch dials or something or rather, I think. And they were taught to do that. And they were taught to like, take the brush and roll it, all right? Uh, to get a fine point. And they were painting, I think it was watch hands or something. Watch faces, maybe. I don't remember. But yeah, yeah, they, it had radium in it because radium glows in the dark. And they uh, were licking the brushes and got mouth cancer. But no, your Citadel paints and stuff, they're not going to hurt you. I mean, they might not taste good. But if you're a brush licker like me, I've seen some people worse than me that come out of like workshops with like all kinds of colored marks on their mouth. I I, leave, I rinse the brush beforehand. I don't know. Does Sam like? I don't, know. I don't think I've ever actually watched Sam paint. I mean, I've seen his, I've seen him on Twitch before, but I, I didn't really pay attention. It's not something I pay attention to. Cinnabon, hello. Also, I feel like I missed some followers. Filthy Hermit, Noble Wizard, and R. Scott. Hi, welcome. All right, guys. I feel like I'm futzing. We got to find something that I'm working on. Okay. So. Here we can get a little bit of the uh, reflection of the cloth. Same thing over here.
Any recs for Adepticon painting seminars besides yours? Oh, oh recommendations. Uh, I'd have to look. Who's who's coming this year? I mean, I know Alfonso Manchi typically comes. I can recommend him. Um, Francesco Ricardo. Francesco Farabi and Ricardo Augustini. Uh, who else? Who else? I can't remember everyone. Sorry. I like, I don't know everyone that's coming. So. I would have to look at the teacher's list. Let's get a little, so the, so she, I'm using the brown in her hair, right? Let's get a little bit of that brown in the base, in the armor, just cause, uh, just use a little bit. Maybe there's some, like the ground or something. It just helps reuse that color elsewhere. Helps tie, tie these, uh, things together. Uh, I mean, I have a bit of, I have a traditional art background. I also got, uh, I'm mostly self-taught in terms of miniature painting. I mean, when I was starting, I watched some videos, like the old painting Buddha videos from Ben Comets. Uh... But I would say I'm mostly self-taught, other than my bit of traditional art background. And uh, after I got some coaching from uh, Alfonso, when I felt like I wasn't really improving on my own. I felt that I was no longer, I had plateaued a little bit. I think you can learn a lot from traditional art, though. Uh, I mean, principles of color theory and all of that composition and everything, they apply 
pretty much the same. Who would you say was your biggest influence with regard to your painting style? Wei Wang? I'll let you look that one up if you don't know who that is. I do. I like the art of Warcraft. What would make you, what would uh, give the indication that I like Warcraft? I think if you want to set yourself as a, apart as a miniature painter, or any painter, for that matter, any artist. You have to look for inspiration outside of your uh, sphere, let's say. Okay, so... Maybe you like me, or maybe you like land, or maybe you like, I don't know, whatever other miniature painter. Got me. I mean, there's tons, right? Oh, you're going to do... Is become a copycat if you try and just do what they do, right? And probably not as a good of one. Right? So you have to find things outside of your outside of the miniature painting world. My other probably big influence is Frank Frazetta. I don't particularly think I paint like Frank Frazetta at all. Uh, but... Uh, some of the things he does, I do tend to do a bit in my work. Heinrich Clay? I don't know who that is. Who's Heinrich Clay? German illustrator. Well, you do like all black and white? I see some colored stuff, but it is mostly black and white illustration. I see some painting. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, miniature artists would probably say guys like Paul Bonner. I'm sure 
Paul is uh, Albert's. If he's still here, he probably went to bed, but probably his his biggest influence. Do I have a Warhammer army to play? I have a kill team. So, yes, sort of. I don't have a whole army. I don't, that's too many models for me to paint. I don't have that much, I don't have time to do all that. But I do have, uh, I do have a kill team. That's a little more my speed in terms of uh, the amount of work I can get done. I think I need to make this one a little bigger. All right, what's next? Thanks, Robrocom. Let's get a little reflection of the, the cape and the armor. It is, I guess, I mean, sort of. I don't know if it's exactly Joan of Arc, but it is uh, certainly you, you would have to ask Mr. Tebow Ron that. It is his uh, figure. Victor Pine Dart. Hello. Thanks for following. Being a Frenchman, I would assume that it is probably Joan of Arc. Yeah, I've played. See you, Jonas. There might be, yeah, there might be some reflection of the cape on the bottom merchant. This is whether I'm still feeling the red or not. This is why I haven't played around with the uh, the bounce light on her, her jaw, because I'm still not 100% uh, on, the, on the red yet. 
That archangel has it, it has indeed killed many a Xenos. That Xenos filth. Hmm. Hello, Nail? Nail? Maybe. Maybe it is faster, but, you know, this works for me. Like I said, I'm just having fun. I'm just playing around. Let's assume it is Joan of Arc. Uh -huh. Let's see what Joan of Arc wore. What color? What colors uh, is Joan of Arc typically depicted in? Uh, sometimes she's red. Sometimes she's in blue. Sometimes she's on fire. Red seems to be a pretty common depiction of her. She seems to often be depicted wearing red, red and white, but then sometimes blue with the, the fleur de lis, fleur de lis, fleur de lis, I don't know, French can make fun of my pronunciation. Uh, do, did, did you ever do Photoshop corrections for your own minis to take? into a new space and see it from a different point of view. Yeah, I mean, I've done it. I, I often will do it with free. If I'm going to do like a freehand or something or like a tattoo, a lot of times I will uh, pull it into Photoshop and uh, draw like a rough layout of the tattoo just to see if it's like working with the form and stuff before I just paint it on top. So that's a pretty uh, common one I will do.
All right, so her head comes across, right? Look at look, look, let's look at the uh, the cast shadow. So where does it come across the this? Okay, because the shadow needs to line up. So if the light's coming in from this direction, right? It comes in like this. We need to make sure that this shadow lines up. So it needs to follow down here and then cut across. Something like that. Dude, uh, no, I don't think I, I appreciate that coffee, coffee, coffee house that, uh, that maybe, but I don't think I would, <laughs> I don't think I would have 570 viewers. I don't think there's enough, um, miniature painters watching Twitch for me to get that many. I mean, who's the most popular? Like, I know, I know, uh, miniatures, Den Vincenzo gets quite a few, right? He does okay. See a teal. I Xtam Slavic 42 Slovic. Hey, I've heard your name everywhere and seen some of, of your amazing artists. Uh, also, can't believe the level of realism in this night. Thanks. I'm not, um, I'm not in it for the viewers. He, he does this full time. He does it like almost every day. He's an entertainer, an entertainer and a painter where, uh, I just do this for fun and hopefully give something back that you guys find interesting.
No, I am not Slovak. I very rarely use heavy bodies. Um, I know someone like like uh, Alfonso Banshee uses heavy bodies quite a bit. He likes them. Uh, they're not really my thing. I don't... Uh, they're just not the properties of paint that I like to paint with. There's nothing wrong with them. It's a being like, uh, you know, do you ever paint with gouache? And it's like, no, no, no. Just not really my thing. You could paint a figure with gouache, spe specifically acrylic gouache if you wanted to, but it's just not my medium of choice. Make the uh, red a little silky. Give it a nice highlight. And we can tone it back down with some red if we need to. In Augsburg coffee. I'm just going to say Kuzmin. Hello, Kuzmin. And Nick the Nose. I like that name, Nick the Nose. It sounds like a gangster name. Hey, I'm Nick the Nose. Yeah, it's a boy Nick the Nose, you know? Go see two, Tony Two Toes. You gotta remember that it's like a mirror, right? So it's gonna flip things over, so this is reflecting what's above it. So it's gonna have the shadow, because it's gonna reflect the shadow, and then it's gonna reflect a little bit of the highlight. Hi, AI Loops. It's Lovic. Thanks for following. Thanks. I grab a little bit of this uh, color right here, make some more little adjustments to the fabric. You know, 
you have to decide what kind of fabric it is. I think it's some kind of satin or silk or something. You can also introduce some extra folds. Right? If we, if we want, we can uh, we can play around with the the folds. Maybe there's another fold right here that comes across. And get a little highlight in there. Can change. Okay, we don't have to. Stick to exactly how the sculpt is done. Can sculpt with the paint. All right. What do you think so far? Looking, it's looking all right. Obviously, this is whatever, because I still have to do the stomach too. Uh, where'd this sword go? What did I do with it? Here it is. So, sword goes there. All right. So we're going to have to figure this out at some point. I want to do something with the sleeves. If they're silk, does she also have silk sleeves or does she have um, something else, you know? We're going fancy. I guess she'd probably have silk sleeves. So, that, or maybe satin white. I don't know when satin was invented, but we can we can try and do a, a satin effect on the uh, on the white if you guys want linen, white linen. They were. How long have I been painting? Uh, <laughs> miniatures? Figures? Like over 15 years or something? I've been painting professionally or I did my first box art in 2020. Can't quite remember. Anyways, I'm going to take a quick break. When I uh, when we come back, we'll... Uh, Work on the satin or whatever. All right, be right back. Paint miniatures for a living. No, I'm not rich. <laughs> yeah, are you rich? You want to buy some figures? You want to commission me to do a paint job? All right, let's uh, let's play with the satin, okay? So, what do we need to achieve a satin look? So, one of the most important satin is basically very similar to a metallic. So, we have to 
one of the things about satin is how uh, reflective it is. So we're going to get some really strong, like, white whites. Okay, so we're going to approach it in kind of the same, same mentality as, as a metallic. Nye Cow and Holly Kid and Pepsi Man the Man. Pepsi Man! Hello. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so we want to think about, like, where the folds are going to be. Um, in line with... The reflectivity of the uh, the surface. Okay. And this is a another interesting case of where we can like introduce some some of our own folds because it's a very flat surface. So we we can introduce some some volumetrics to the uh, the fabric and kind of create our own folds. Mimicking Nemo. Hello. Yeah, I'm not I'm not rich. I get I get by. Okay, so here, right, we're facing, that's facing at the light, so that's where it's going to get, want to think about the geometry of it. We will get reflections where the fabric is facing towards the light. So one of the fun things we can do is create these, these sort of, uh, zigzaggy shapes like we did on the metallic parts. If you missed the metallic section of the stream, check out the YouTube. If anybody's cool and wants to link the YouTube channel in chat, you can watch all the old previous streams. You can go back and watch me paint the armor. Okay, so something like this. Thanks, Mini Mancer. All right, so we get all these little, I don't know. WM type shapes similar to how it functions on the uh, on the metallic, right?
I'm a younger brother too. I'm the youngest of three. Helpful. What? Thought everybody was supposed to do stuff for me. I'm the baby. Okay. So. That works. Let's get some of this yellowish tone in here. That might be too yellow brown for what we're trying to achieve. So we'll get some some of this gray. We want a little bit of yellow in it, but not too much. Sugar Bakery. Whoa, thanks for following. Okay, so to do the satin, we have to achieve a high contrast material. I almost think of it like non-metallic, like I said, or like waves, you know? Now, let's look at it. It's coming here. So this one will probably get more light on it. We can also start to play with some blue in the uh, upper upper reflections that are not like the main sun reflection. Something like that, right? We just keep building up the uh, the transitions.
boom, bam, no one cares that you're playing Fortnite. All right, uh, let's see. Take some of the brown and some of the blue, get a nice neutral gray. So this still faces up towards the sky. Now we are getting away from the, uh, the main light source here. So the, this is curving away. So we don't want to push the uh, light too much because it is this part is going to be in shadow. Thanks, Jared. So once we get it to where we want, we can glaze back over top of it to unify it and soften it down. Right. We can get a little bit of ground reflection in here. So this is in cast shadow, but we get some, uh, we do get some variation inside of that. So I paint some, some of the form and then I can soften it where I want by doing the same thing and kind of glazing back over top of it and unifying it. All right, this is an interesting one. So we need to somehow connect all these. If you guys look at satin, it often will have this very rippling kind of wave-like shapes. Hi, Richard. Okay, so Something like that. What is that? Wimbat. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for following. Appreciate you. All right, let's really push the high reflections. Satin is super reflective right so the highlights on satin need to be just as bright as the steel 
It's just the shadows don't go as deep, okay? It's still a high contrast material, but we won't we don't push to black like we like we would on a uh, non-metallic. And like these shadows here, they're probably too dark. So I can make a bit of a intermediate tone. Soften that, soften that down some. All right, let's have a little fun with the yellow. Sweet, right? So we've got this kind of yellow in the uh. in the ground here. So in the satin, I also can get a uh, ground reflection, right? Because it's shiny. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip it over. And in some of these lower uh, facing shapes, I can get some of this ground noise. Introduce introduce a uh, a warm lower reflection to some uh, of this material. Where where are you located, uh, and Theranos? I did not. Uh, Southeast U.S. Uh, Savage Miniatures. It's a good distributor. In the US, they sell from quite a few brands. And they're located in Atlanta, I think. Coconut cheese. Hello. Sorry, I don't have any bots, but if you check uh, down below, you can see my Instagram and YouTube and stuff. Should have links.
down below. Painted Rat. Lots of new followers today. I have some missed it. No, did I get Wimbat? I think I got Wimbat. Well, hello, everyone. It's a busy, uh, busy evening. Lots of, lots of new followers tonight. Now, let's think about this one for a second, okay? So I have a shape. It comes back. Does it really make sense to then follow that shape also? I don't know. Maybe there should be a gap. Maybe there should be something like this that separates these. And then that can be its own thing, its own reflection. I'm just going to slap some ivory on, go kind of thick with it. Really try and pop in that eye light. Fifty. Fiffy versus the world, but thank you. We have more people on the art stream now, on the art category now. We're getting, are they all coming from Instagram? Which one is it? Like all these, all these new viewers. They are they coming from Twitch or are they coming from Instagram? Who wants to make a who wants to make a guess? I think some of them are actually coming from, from Discovery on Twitch. See, huh? I got some people who discover through Twitch. They were hanging out, watching all the twerking videos in, in the art uh, category, and they were like, what's this guy doing? I'm joking. I don't think you guys were watching twerking videos in art category. And if you were, you know, I'm not going to judge you. Is that still a thing? Came from OnlyFans, word. Cool. I don't think I'm allowed to, uh... Even make a joke that, like, you can find me on OnlyFans. I don't, I don't think that's against, like, Twitch Terms of Service. Hi, Kate. Thank you. All right, how do we feel about the satin? Huh? Is it looking appropriately satiny? 
Dude, I, no, I would have negative 20,000 viewers. Nobody wants to see that, man, I'm telling you. All right, so we need to think about the cast shadow on, on this part of the arm, okay? So this would also, if this shadow comes across a bit, bit, this, the cape would also cast a shadow kind of like here. So we need to create something like that, give some shape. The armor probably casts a bit of one, right? So that's not quite right. It's a little too angled. It's a little more like this. Yeah. A little, a little more like that. And then that needs to come up a little bit. I made it a little too low. Uh, thanks for following Fifty. With, oh. You just want to see me toss my hair back like a, uh, was it like a perfume commercial? Just coming up out of a lake or a cologne commercial. I don't know. Oh. Let me see. Let me see if I can do the hair whip for you guys. You ready? There you go. Yeah. All right, so let's look at this, right? So we've got the reflection. We need to make sure we can see the reflection of the arm or the, the shirt. I'm sure somebody clipped it. Uh, thanks for the follow, okay. Um, we need to get the reflection of the shirt in the steel, right? Something like that, so we can see it from the front. I'm a bit confused. You're painting this mini as if it was a flat surface. Um, so, are you confused about the the metallic parts? Because if that is yes, technically the case. So, 
We are painting. I am painting. I always say we. I like to assume that you guys are following along, right? It's a we. We're doing this collectively. Okay. So, yes, painting the uh, metallic in a non-metallic style, which means that it is we're painting without metallic paints to try and paint a the illusion of metallic. Uh, in this way, I'm able to control the light exactly how I want. I can also paint the environment that I want her to be in. Right. So, but we're painting an illusion, just like a canvas painter would do on a, you know, a flat surface. Um, but the problem with non-metallic is that it the reflections, they don't move like a real metallic surface would. Right. So we have to pick specific angles. Right. What I would call the main viewing angle. I would call it something else, but it's inappropriate to say on Twitch. Uh, the the main viewing angle, right, of the of the figure. Okay, this is where we want people to look at it. When I go to post photos, this is the angle you'll see it on at. Um, and then based on that angle, I paste all, paint all the reflections based off of that angle. Then when we get to things like this, I have to then start to fill in the blanks when I paint the other angles. So like when I go to paint the back of her shoulder, I'll have to paint another reflection on the back to make it make sense and you fill in the, the information. I hope that was clear. But if you're asking about the cast shadows, yes, the cast shadows are being painted too, as if the lighting was basically coming from this direction, right? So the light's coming. The camera is now the light, right? So you can see the, the reflections here line up with the camera, right? The light on her head, the light on her hair, the light on the, the whatever, the sleeves, okay? The cast shadows, they all line up like that. I'm actually just making this all up as I go along. I have no idea what I'm doing. So non-metallic tends to work better on figures for display. They can give you a specific kind of style, like they tend to look more cartoony on, on gaming figures. Uh, I'll show you one of my gaming figures in a minute. I do them sometimes also on my gaming figures, but typically they're for display. And if I do them on a gaming figure, it's for photography. Uh, but you can do it on gaming figures. But generally, if I was painting like a whole army, I would probably use metallic paints. Like a whole army is in like a big army, not just like 
you know, the six figures that are my kill team. Uh, because the metallic tends to work better when you're playing in places like big convention halls where the lighting is, you're, you're not, uh, the lighting changes. You're moving around the table a lot, so you get lots of different interesting viewing angles on the figures. Right. So here's a so her right. So let's let's look at another gaming figure. Right. So this is another gaming figure. This is my my space marine. No, he's fine. Yeah, you know, this is why I do this, so you guys can ask questions. Uh so this is another this is one of my gaming figures, right? He's not metallic. I did some some fancy stuff on him, okay? Like, uh, so all this is now metallic, but like here, this this has a very French term, and I'm I don't remember what it is. I'm gonna trompe trompe or something. I don't know. Tebow is gonna watch uh, this tomorrow, and he is going to be so mad at me when he hears me mispronounce all of these French words. Trump? Louis? Trump Louis? Trump Louis? Anyways, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, uh, basically it's a, you paint a three-dimensional, a false three-dimensional surface on a, uh, two-dimensional surface. In this case, it's still a three-dimensional surface, but the these, like all this stuff here, these flames, they're not sculpted on. That's a flat surface, right? This is all a flat surface. There's no rivets here. Uh, there's no shape to any of this trim. This is a flat surface. These little things around his neck, that's a flat surface. Okay, so all that's flat. It is a an effect. Uh, to make it look like there's three dimension, three dimensionality to it. Uh, here's another gaming figure. This guy, he is also non-metallic. But these aren't mine, these are my roommates. Like this guy has like actual gold paint on, on his shoulder and like his chest, right? So you can see that the reflection of the gold moves as you move it around, right? Where non-metallic does not do that. Hola, Anika. Hablo español. Así puedes preguntar en español si quieres. Uh, I think you may be the only madman I've ever seen ad trimmed. He's not chaos. This is this guy's not chaos. He's a salamander. It's Death Watch. <sighs> Dare you say he's chaos?
Well, hello from Portugal. Hello to Portugal. Thanks for hanging out. You know, I don't know a lot of Portuguese mini painters. Doesn't seem, uh, for how popular it is in Spain, I get you guys are different, separate countries and everything, but for how popular it is in, uh, Spain, I don't, I don't see a lot of Portuguese mini painters. What's up with that? Portuguese. Obrigado. Speaks two languages. I speak, I get by. I have the Spanish equivalents of like a five year old, if that. Also, my Spanish vocabulary is like. <laughs> really uh my vocabulary is very focused on painting so there's a lot of words for like everyday items that I have no idea what they are but I can list some pretty obscure colors and tell you techniques for things that you would never refer to in, uh, like, day-to-day -day Spanish. Like, veladuras. Veladuras. A glaze. Not a, not a common... Not exactly a word you would use every day. Impramacion. Uh, I don't know what the word for a trash can is. I know, like, basura is trash, but I don't know what a trash can is. Primer, I use just Vallejo uh, primer in the bottle. I airbrush. Don't, I don't use... Um, what's it called? Uh, aerosol primer. I also know some other, like, really obscure Spanish words for when I was hanging out in Spain. Like, I know how to say, Danny's un cenicero, which is, do you have an ashtray? No, there's no hurrying up on this. Okay, don't rush me. This the whole point of this figure was to take our time to show you guys, you know, what it's like when you're painting something that you're trying to push a little on, okay? I could have had this figure done in four hours. But I want you guys to see the process in its entirety. Enjoy the process.
Yes, I have been to the El Prado. I have been to Madrid. This year I am doing a uh, teaching tour in Spain. I will be in Barcelona, y Madrid, y Valencia. I have been to many places in Europe. Uh, would I recommend before or after assembly? So it depends. Uh, there are some things I would paint separate, like a tank. Maybe I would paint the uh, the turret separate. Um, but yes, I would I would I normally assemble majority of the figure before painting. Yeah, uh, uh, Prado is awesome. Um, seeing uh, the Velasquez and. And uh, the Goyas. I also went to the Reina Sofia, which and saw Guernica. Guernica was very cool, pretty pretty crazy. Painting is gigantic. If you don't know what Guernica is, is uh, Painting by Pablo Picasso, probably, probably his most famous painting. And it is huge. Banpaku and Mambo Sauce. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for following. So this is interesting because this is a We have to paint the uh, the gauntlet from the sword. Mambo sauce, thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. How very cool of you. So we have to paint the uh, the reflection of the gauntlet. Which goes across a bit of this. The gauntlet. Mm, inside of the gauntlet, will it be steel? Or leather? That's a good question. It'll probably be leather. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of Salvador Dollies in the Reina Sofia. Top, top, pito pan. The Pito Pan. Hello. Thanks for following. And I, I have no idea. I'm just going to say Poquinas. Pocenas. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. 
the beginning the the beginning of your name a little hard for me Hoy sasti bocenas which it's probably portuguese and like because you're portuguese and i'm probably pronouncing it wrong Coisas tipo senas, meaning stuff like things. Roy? All right. Hi, Roy. Okay, so like cosas. Coisas? Hey, what about poster tack and a wood block? Last question. Wait, what? Last question is Sarah, what are you using to hold figure up to paint? Looks like oh it's uh it's a it's a wine cork. So that's a wine cork and then that's just uh, sticky tech. Silas bed and Zeron Zerondrak. Hello. Yeah, sorry, my, uh, my span, my, uh, my Spanish pronunciation is passable at best, and, uh, my Portuguese is not going to be anywhere close. Portuguese. Portuguese? But it'll be better than my French. Oh, man. Better than that language. There's something you, you have to know about French anyways. No matter how good your pronunciation is, unless you are a French native, and I literally mean France, it's going to be wrong. because they don't even like French Canadian. Purple Alice, hello. 
Thanks for following. Welcome. No, I like the French. I spent some time in Lyon. There's a lot of French people I like. But they are very particular people. I went into a bakery. A cafe. And I just wanted to get a uh, croissant, a croissant, a cafe. Huh? Coffee? Cafe latte, all right. Just a, just a cafe latte and a croissant. And I spoke to the lady and she was like, bonjour, madame. No, nah. she didn't want anything to do with it. She was like, ah, oh, you speak English, talk to this guy. going to paint my first face soon. It's going to be cheeks. LOL. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get a little bit of this, this bend in here. Mm -hmm. I emphasize the bend in the armor by bending the sword a little. I, I I quite enjoyed my time in uh, in Lyon. It was very nice. Most everyone was super friendly. Bye-bye. Thanks for the bits. Appreciate it. Have a good night. All right, how are we feeling? Mm. Did a bit of work. Let's, let's, you know what, let's real quick, let's put some, uh, let's put some color where her hand is going to be. So is she, she is not wearing gloves. Her hand comes up and over like this, right? So we've got to paint the reflection of her hand. So we've got to think about painting the fingers. So what we're going to do is we're literally going to paint the reverse of what we see. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the hundred bits. Uh, 
So we've got a little bit of the palm. Let's start dark. Not too dark, but like the dark side of her skin. Okay. So her palm comes up like this, then we get fingers. The finger wraps over, kind of comes up like this, and then back down the handle. Then we get the handle, and then we get the other part of her arm, or her hand here. Then we have another little bit of the finger, and we actually would have more of the hand reflection than the, than the what's it called? It's all very weird, like everything gets kind of like stretched and shrunk into the well, like I said, the reflections, they don't make perfect sense in uh, space like this. This all kind of comes up here, right? We have to think about the handle. And then it all sort of does this. There's a separation here, so we can kind of play around with the... That, like, when you cross over, that this, this reflection would actually change some. Um, so if we think about it, maybe this reflection wouldn't quite work like that from this way. Maybe it would actually curve a little more, so maybe it would do something more like this. Uh, and then the, we have to paint in the rest of the, the hilt. So the hilt comes across like this, right? It does do that, right? Yes. It comes across like that. And then we get the other end of the cross guard over here. Hello, Doug's Minis. Welcome, welcome.
Mm, does that make sense? It's a little more like this. So I'm gonna I'm painting this now, right? I'm kind of painting in these shadows and stuff, but these are gonna get kind of blurred anyways. Yes, this is flatter. This has a curve to it, right? It goes like this. This is more of a cylinder. I'll eventually like pull this down and paint this whole thing pretty quick. Yeah, thermal shrub. Hello, welcome. And that Mayberry 92 popping off tonight. So what kind of light do we get, right? We have to think about the direction that the light is coming in. Okay, so if the light's coming in from this way, the back fingers, then none of this that's reflecting would get any light. However, these parts of the fingers, so the light's coming in this way, these parts of the fingers here, this would get the light. So, that gets light, right? This is going to be in shadow, so it's not really going to get any light. So this part of the hand here can be quite dark. Those parts of the fingers will be quite dark. But that will be quite bright because that is in light, so that does get uh, a strong light source on it. Okay. The top of the hand guard will also be quite bright, so it's going to have a bit of a gray bluish reflection. Something like that. This will have some light. And then the bottom of it will get some of the ground reflection. Just like the, uh, the chest plate. What kind of things do you consider with the armor reflecting sunlight or on unnatural places? What kind of things do you consider with the armor? Paco, I would, I would uh, go and watch last week's stream on the YouTube channel. You can watch the VODs uh, and you can see a bit more, like I, I talk a bit more in depth about the whole painting process of the armor. Right? Like why, why I place lights certain places and Thanks, Mini Mancer. You trying to become a mod? 
you know, I'm just going to make you a mod. You want to be a mod? Oh, I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how. <laughs> no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to. I'm good. So on these, we actually would get a strong reflection, which is super bizarre, but you do get an inside reflection because what's happening is the light. <laughs> this is so weird. But so normally like the sword would be like this, right? And you'd be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. There'd be a reflection here. Right? But there's a reflection, the same reflection on the inside, right? So you'd have a reflection right here on this ball, but then you also have a reflection that's right here. Okay? This is super messed up. Because what's happening is that the sun's coming down, hitting here, right? Hitting this thing. So the sun actually hits all of this, but where does it reach your eye? That's where you get the brightest reflection point. So here it comes down, it hits right here, it bounces into your eye. The sun also comes, hits here, reflects in the armor, and then comes and bounces in your eye. It's messed up. Hi, Mandalo Man Mandolo Rayan. Always have trouble with your name. So yeah, reflections of uh, of metal inside of another piece of metal is very bizarre. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like the sword edge, there's somewhere on this edge that's gonna get a reflection. So what we want, we want like right here. To create a little reflection of the sword edge. Yeah, dude, the specular reflections of metallics are, are super bizarre. Um,
because you can't see that reflection, but that reflection exists. It's just reflecting in another reflection. Yeah, I mean, the way reflections work, right? Like, you guys see this reflection. Oh, oh okay. So the camera is seeing the reflection right here, right? This reflection exists, but it's not there for me. It's here. I'm pointing at where it's brightest from my point of view, right? So they move, but they exist. They exist everywhere at all times, right? It's all about just your point of view. So you're seeing the reflection that the armor is seeing, right? Right, so you're you're painting the reflection on the ball that the armor is seeing, which then changes depending. Yes, I'm talking about repainting painting a mirror, basically facing a mirror. Uh, and yeah, it just gets really bizarre. But yeah, so that's what's happening, right? Because if I take two cans, don't judge me for having multiple cans. Now look what's happening, okay? Let me zoom out. Right? So now you're getting this reflection and this reflection, but now you're also getting, you're seeing the reflection of the reflection, right? So now you're seeing the reflection of the cans reflecting off of each other. So it's just, because if I move them apart, right, that reflection goes away. And now there's a really bright reflection right here. Science. There's some, some technology. Oh yeah, it's super messed up. Look, the only time that this is ever gonna come up, okay? Is when you're doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Ah, I like it. It's a good one. That was a quality pun. Hey, take note, Richard. That's how you make a pun.
Yeah, it's all very, very, all very bizarre. But yeah, you're you're basically only ever gonna do it when you're painting uh, something like this, right? This is never really gonna come up in basically any other circumstance. Okay. All right, so we do all that, right? But we can't have it too detailed. Sure, it's going to be a little more detailed because it's, you know, in proximity. But we have to... We have to tone things down. Right? We have to blur everything a little bit because it's not, we don't want like perfect edges, right? The armor is not literally mirror quality. Yeah, so we're just going to take a little bit of each adjacent tone. We're going to start to uh, overlap things, right? We're just trying to blur everything a little bit. A tuba or a sousaphone? I did a project in art school that was uh, uh, a painting of a saxophone. That was one of the hardest drawings I've ever done.
A uh, saxophone is way more complicated than a uh, tuba in terms of, like, the number of parts. It's just, like, full of... Uh, all the little buttons and rods that control all the... Technically, they're not buttons, they're keys. But, yeah, there's a lot of little pieces that all were reflecting, and if you ever want to make yourself go nuts. Hi, shiny Mew Paints. How are you? No, a tuba is not just one pipe. A tuba is, depending on if you're, if it's a three valve or a four valve, uh, it would be at least four pipes. Or, yeah. Because it changes. I guess if they're all open, it's one long continuous pipe, but you shut off. Different parts. I used to play tuba. Okay, so we kind of have the reflection of the sword in the chest, blah, blah, blah. This is going to go on top, and then you're not even going to see most of it. I think that that one is maybe, eh, this is, okay, this is probably off. That one probably needs to come over more. Or does it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it come, could come over a little bit, but I mean, this is the main viewing angle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where we made it today. Did some some satin, some of the the cloak. Uh, worked on the the reflection of the the chest a little bit, the sword, and did the hair. We got quite a bit done. Three hours, not bad, not bad. Wait, it's about. 10 o'clock, we're going to call it here.